how do you define sacrifice? How do you define sacrifice? Is it simply inconvenience? Is it taking on what someone else wants you to do and laying down what it is that you want to do? Again, the question that we're going to lift up tonight is how do we define sacrifice? As we round third and begin to head for home in this series that we're calling Unstoppable, Unstoppable. The, the road to victory, the road to the resurrection, we are looking at the life of Jesus Christ and looking at spots, scenes, if you will, where he had the chance, the opportunity, if he so chose, to get up, to stop, to tap out, yeah. to say no more, to chuck the deuces <laughs> and say, I don't want any more parts of this. But instead, as an act of obedience and in the surrender of his will, chose to follow through with the command of the Father and do that for which he came. And we're blessed by it and we're sitting here today because of it. Absolutely. But tonight we're talking about sacrifice, which means we have to talk about perhaps one of the saddest days in history. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Let's go to Mark 15, family, verse 33. Mark chapter number 15, verse 33. We're going to just read down to verse 39. One reason that we do this every week is that we believe in the importance of Scripture. This is Faithful Central Bible Church. Not Bible. Not not Bible Church. Bible. Yeah, this is <laughs> Faithful Bible Central Church. Bible Church. Absolutely. And we believe in the public reading of Scripture. Of course. And that the Word of God is the Word of God. And we trust the Word of God and we lean on the Word of God. So we're just going to read a couple passages tonight. Pastor Rico, and we're going to dive in. Brother, you want to take this one? Yeah, I'm going to do ahead, it. I got you. Go ahead, brother. Uh, chapter 15 of Mark, verse 33. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. So that's from about noon to about three o'clock. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Verse 35. And some of the bystanders hearing it said, behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. Jesus on the cross. Yeah. Crying out to the father. Note. <laughs> there you go. This is the one place in scripture yeah. where Jesus does not call God father. Correct. Rather, he quotes David mm -hmm. of Psalm 22. That's good. Verse 1 and says, my God, my God, yeah. why have you forsaken me? Yeah. This, last week we looked at the question, when did God abandon Jesus? It's clear yeah. here that Jesus sees or senses some level of divine abandonment. In other words, God has turned him over yeah. to experience this horrific act. This word that, that we call crucifixion, is birthed out of the Greek word excrucia, from which we get our word excruciating. Yeah. What happened, what they experienced was so painful that they had to come up with a word yeah. to convey what actually happened. Yeah. So what we call crucifixion is perhaps not only the most painful act, but it's also the most shameful act. Absolutely. Uh, we understand from history that Rome would line the streets leading into their cities mm -hmm. with the bodies of people who had been crucified as a deterrent to anyone who would come into the city, it's like, you think you're going to act up coming in here? Yeah, think twice. Think twice. Yeah. Uh, like, th this is what happens to yeah. people who defy yeah. the Roman government. Correct. And Jesus dies this death, lays down his life for our behalf, on our behalf. Yeah. That's, that's sacrifice. <sighs> I I'm curious. Yeah. As you were reading this, and, at, you know, for those who have been walking with the Father for a period of time. Mm -hmm. I wonder what it does to you, yeah. reading it out loud. Like, what is, what are the emotions? Mm -hmm. um, what are the thoughts um, that come to mind that overtake you um, as you reflect on 
him doing this yeah. for you? Bro, that's so that's so good of a question. And and we can make some notes about this as well. Um, because often we read scripture in like what I just did, his its historical context. Correct. Right? We read it in its literal context. Correct. I mean, like what genre of writing is this? Yeah. But rarely do we read scripture in the emotional context. Yeah. You cannot fathom a man who has been beaten to the point where he is beyond recognition. Recognition. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. They've beaten the skin off of this man. Literally. Literally. <laughs> yeah. They've beaten him to a pulp and then forced him to carry a cross beam yeah. to a place in the city where they hang people until they die. Yeah. It is the most excruciating form of death because the way that you would die is that you would <gasps> yep. you would pull yourself up on this cross beam yeah. until your body gave out. Yeah. And then as a consequence of you not being able to any no longer lift yourself up, your internal organs, your lungs would collapse and ultimately give out. Correct. So it's actually a long death. Suffering. <laughs> it's suffering in its yeah. truest form. Yeah. But you ask me, how do I feel? To see a, a a grown man stripped naked, yeah, beaten beyond recognition, crying out to his father, mm -hmm. asking, "Why have you abandoned me? Yeah, why have you forsaken me? Why did you let them do this to me?" Man, that breaks my heart. Yeah, that breaks my heart. To say nothing of the fact and the truth that he's innocent. Correct. He didn't deserve it. Correct. The humiliation. I don't know if you've ever been humiliated, <laughs> but the pain that comes from humiliation yeah. is something that you don't easily shake. No, nor do you ever forget it. Correct. Yeah. So it's, it's rough, man. Yeah. It's a rough one. As we um, enter into this part of his journey, mm. um, it's hard not to reflect on your own walk with him. And to think back to those moments where you missed the mark, mm -hmm. uh, you denied him, yeah, uh, you mishandled um, what he has given you. Mm -hmm. Like you can go down the list, mm -hmm. and to think back that he did all of this for me—that mm -hmm. should have been me on that cross. That should have been me being beaten. To death. That should have been me wearing the crown of thorns. That should have been me taking those nails in my hands. That should have been me. The person who did sin. The person who who did. <laughs> we can go down a list of things that <laughs> we all did. Mm -hmm. But you get to this point where it's a, wow, you love me that much to sacrifice your only begotten son right. for someone like me. I love that you say that, man. Scripture says, while we were yet sinners. While we were yet, man. Christ died for Christ us. Christ died for us, yeah. There's a theme there, and, and family, maybe this will bless you. The theme is this. Redemption precedes righteousness. Yeah. Redemption precedes righteousness. Pat, what you mean? God doesn't force you to get it together before he saves you. Correct. I'll save you and then teach you how to live for me. Correct. This is what we see going all the way back to the Exodus. Correct. God brings the people of Israel out of bondage. Yeah. Out of Egypt. Let's go back. And delivers them through the Red Sea. And in the process, eliminates their oppressors. Correct. And then leads them through the wilderness and into Canaan, into the process of teaching them how to now be my people. Correct. He didn't say, y'all get right in Egypt, and once y'all get right, then I'll deliver you. Yeah. Say that one more time. <laughs> say that one more time. He didn't say, get right in your sin. Yeah. Get right in your bondage. Get right where you are, and then once I see that you're right, now I'll open up a Red Sea for you. Yeah. What I'll do is open up a Red Sea for you, yeah. deliver you, and then teach you how to live for me. Yeah. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Correct. I told you last week, we talked about last week how Scripture is full of hyperlinks. Yeah. One we already clicked on was Psalm 22. Yeah. Another one is Hebrews 10, yeah. verses 19 and, and 20. Talks about when the, when the, when after Christ cries out, it says that the 
the the curtain of the temple was mm. torn in two from top to bottom. Top to bottom, yeah. Meaning that man couldn't have torn it. Correct. Man would have had to tear it from bottom to top. Yeah. Oh, that's a good. That's a good point. <laughs> it, it's a good point. It, it's almost like the hand of God. Yeah. Cuts the curtain of the temple in two. Yeah. Because that now which has separated man and yeah. God has been satisfied. Correct. The sin that separates man and God. Yeah. Us from having us as mortal, limited human flesh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Living separate from God because yeah. of sin, yeah. Christ and his sacrifice has now made that possible for us to enter and have access. Absolutely. Now we rush to the throne and we come boldly to the throne of grace. Yeah. We, we obtain mercy. Yeah. We obtain strength in our time of need because of this sacrifice. You bring, you bring up something that I think is so important to kind of address in this conversation. I remember a pastor saying, um, the cross is the centerpiece. Mm of this, our walk. Yeah. Um, sinners run from it, but believers, unfortunately, don't take the time to observe it mm. until their lives have changed. Yeah. I wonder if sometimes as believers and for those um, who may be watching um, or listening, do we sometimes just overlook what he did for us? Yeah. Like, do we get so comfortable in our position? Do we get so comfortable in our following? Do we get so comfortable in our gifting and our and our and our talents and mm -hmm. the applause from the people and the accolades that we forget about this sacrifice and yeah. what it meant? Yeah, I wonder. That's a good question, man. Because now you start to think about the American church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Jesus died to give me a better life. Correct. Jesus died so that my dreams will come true. Yeah. Jesus died so I can have the house I want, <laughs> marry the person I want, yeah. have the family I want, make the money I want. Yeah. None of those things are true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When, when Jesus' death on the cross is now the door for you to go after your dreams, yeah. you've missed it. You missed it. We use, we use the cross as the, the, the compass to point yeah. us into the direction of the life that we want to go. Absolutely. And Jesus was like, no, no, no. Anyone who would come after me, yeah. anybody who would follow me, you got to take up your cross and take die cross daily. And die daily. The condition of being a Christian is something got to die. Something got to die. Something has to die. And, and what got to yeah. die in your life may not be what got to die in my life. But something has to die. But something got to die. Yeah. Any person that thinks they can follow Christ with no discomfort, yeah. no sacrifice, and no change has missed the mark. Yeah. Jesus said, if you're going to come after me, you got to sacrifice something. Yeah. It's going to cost you something. Yeah. Something has to go. Something has to die. Something has to lie down. And we do not like that. Yeah. And I think, I think unfortunately, we, and I'll say we, yeah. as a body, unfortunately, have watered down mm -hmm. what that looks like. We've made Christianity and walking with God so glamorous. Yes. And we've put a Hollywood spin to it. Mm -hmm. um, and we've made it into this, every day is going to be great. You will always have a smile on your face. Yeah. You won't face hardships. You won't have to go through trials and tribulations. And we present that to a world that then responds by saying, oh, I don't have to go anything, go through anything? Oh, I can digest that. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Let, let, let's do this. Yeah. Oh, cool. And I can still be me. Oh, cool. And I can still not change my. Oh, okay, cool. I can do that. And so many people miss out mm -hmm. on the true essence of why he did what he did. Yeah. And the impact that it had on generations to come. Right. So it then begs the question, what are we doing as believers that's causing people to look away? Mm. What are we saying that's causing people to close their ears? Yeah. Um, how is our lives a demonstration of a God who was sent his only begotten son to die for us? How is that being translated on a daily basis where people can say, oh, wow, he, he did that for me? Yeah. Okay, so what should my response be? Right. You know? Right. And that's, that's, the, that's the kind of conflict because you got the, you got the cross as a, as a symbol of comfort. Correct. You know, comfort to your American lifestyle. Absolutely. Comfort that never requires you to change. At all. <laughs> but then you got the cross also, because the, the question I believe I'm hearing you ask is like, what repels people from this, this beautiful message? Absolutely. It's also the cross as a weapon. Yeah. 
right? Oh. The, the cross that we use to beat people over the head with in Weaponized. condemnation and judgment. Absolutely. Telling them how, how, how bad they are Correct. and how sinful they are Correct. and how wrong they are. Yeah. And that there's, they have to qualify for the love of yeah. God. We weaponize the gospel yes. for our own agenda. Yes. Yeah. So certain people get condemnation. Correct. Certain people get judgment. Correct. Certain people get wrath. Some Correct. people get beat over the head with a cross. Yeah. And other people, the cross is made out of Play-Doh, and I get to shape it and mold it and conform it <laughs> to, whatever to, to, I, to whatever I want yeah, it to, yeah. to do and be. Yeah. I could put rhinestones on my cross. Right. Reared around my neck. <laughs> right. By Jesus' peace. Bling, bling, Jesus. Yeah. Right. <laughs> bling, bling, Jesus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so the cross is now conformable. Yeah. To do and be whatever I want and need and do and need, need it to, to be. be. Yeah. Jesus said, "You don't get that option, man." Not at all. You don't get that option. Not at all. I love you. As is. As is. I'll accept you. Yeah. As is. Yeah. But I love you too much to leave you. Yeah. As is. Yeah. The cross requires change. Yeah. Commitment. Yeah. Sacrifice. Yeah. Jesus commends himself, gives himself over to lay down his life, but he also commends himself into the hands of the Father. He says, mm-hmm. Father, into your hands. In your hands. I, I commit my spirit. In my spirit, yeah. I've laid down my body. Right? Yeah. Scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Correct. He is, he is the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Curses everything that hangs on a tree. Um if you strike the the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. <laughs> Correct. Right? You could literally just <laughs> click through and, right, and right. He, everything that was said that the Messiah would be, yeah. he was that. Yeah. <laughs> full, 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 right, right. Through and through. <laughs> right, right, right. But the question is, what do we do with that? What do we do with that? What do you do with that? Yeah. What do you do with that? Like, yeah. you know, this can't just be words on a page. Yeah. This can't just be a Sunday morning experience that shows up nowhere in your Monday through Saturday. Correct. If Christ doesn't inform how you live, then are you living for him? Yeah. And if you're not living for him, then who are you living for? Mm. <laughs> Say that again. Yeah. If you're not living for him, yeah. then who are you living for? Is it your own ambition? Is it your own agenda? Is it your own goals that you set for yourself to be successful or to be this or to gain that or to gain this? Mm-hmm. If that is your very foundation that foundation unfortunately won't last Mm-mm. very long Mm-mm. Mm-mm. because now you've put all your hope on something else. That's not the solid rock. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, but I think it's a question that everyone wrestles with on a daily. Who are you living for? Mm. And how is that impacting others that you come in contact with? Right. And for those who are watching you live this life out, how is that being translated? Right. Is it pricking the hearts? Is it causing people to rethink? <laughs> right. Is it causing people to take a step back and take self inventory? Right. Is it causing the ripple effect? <laughs> what message about Christ do people get from the observation of your life? Mm. Right. That's good. So when I watch your life, what what conclusions can I draw about God? Yeah. Since you yeah. profess to be a Christian. Correct, correct. Since you profess to be a follower of God. Correct. What what do people who don't believe yeah. understand about what it means to believe yeah. based on watching how you live your life? Can I can I yeah. share this for you, man? Uh, we uh, I'm it, I'm it. <laughs> I'll never forget this man. I was in and I think I've shared I shared this story with you a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh I was in I was in high school. I think I was in the twelfth grade. 12th grade, yeah, last year of high school. And my, I believe it was my government teacher, mm. government economics teacher, one of the two. I'll never forget it. He, uh, at the end of the semester, our last day of school, he came up to me um, after, the cl- after the class cleared out, literally. And I'm gathering my things and he comes up to me and he says, Rico, he said, for the, the months that I've had you in my class, um, one thing had stood out. One thing has stood out about you is that you believe in God. Mm. And he said, I'm going to be honest. He said, I'm an atheist. Um, but if you get your church and you become the pastor of that church, mm-hmm. I will make it a point to come hear you speak man. because of how you've lived your life in my classroom. Yeah. As I'm, man, you have no idea. 
Oh, Pat, man. Mm -hmm. Sorry, bro. Uh, I'm 35 years old. Mm -hmm. And every time I tell that story, that rocks me to the to my core mm. because it was something about my lifestyle that translated to someone who said, you know what? I'm okay about this guy thing. I'm not even considering it for that grown man to come to a teenager to say that. <sighs> I'm still in awe because it had nothing to do, had nothing to do with me, had nothing to do with, my intellect had nothing to do with my smile or my me being uh, um, charismatic or happy. Go lucky had nothing to do with that. It was the Christ that dwells in me mm. that he saw that made him respond the way that he did. And it makes me think how much of an impact are we having on today's world? Mm. How many people are literally watching how we live our lives and are responding the same way. Yeah. How, how, how are we presenting Christ to the world that's causing them to say, I'll come in, I'll come in here. You speak. Yeah. I'll, I'll come in here. You preach because it was something, it was something about you, how you interacted with the classmates. It was something about how you would, would, would hug people and encourage people and pray for people that encouraged me, mm. man. This world will be a whole lot different. Yeah. Yeah. I love that for you. Yeah. To see how God has used you, man. Yeah. Then and since then. Yeah. And he's done the same thing for you, Pat. The same thing. I'm, I'm going to make people laugh. So quick story. <laughs> I've been at Faithful for a while now. Uh, and I remember... I'll never forget it when during that time we were Faithful Central were doing the uh, Easter production <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they revealed to the church who would be Jesus. And it was yours truly, J. Patrick. I'm not going to say your full name, J. Patrick. <laughs> and so J. Patrick for many years embodied the essence of Jesus, <laughs> literally. But I, I say that I say that with with jokes and with humor. But you've done that off the stage as well. Hmm. You haven't just portrayed that inside the four walls. You've done it outside the four walls. Whether it was having a conversation with an adult, mm -hmm. whether it was encouraging a group of students. Um, God have, has always placed you in, in moments and given you opportunities to share his word. And you've done it boldly. Hmm. And because of that, people like me have been blessed. Our ministry have been blessed. So I applaud you, brother, for saying yes. Trying to make me cry. Listen, listen, if I'm going to drop a tear, brother, you right. drop a tear too. You ain't going to get me. <laughs> no, man. And I mean that. Seriously, brother, I, yeah. I mean that wholeheartedly. Thank you, man. Yeah. And I tell you, the hardest part about it is the times in that season or in those seasons yeah. when I've blown it. Mm. I've blown it. I missed the mark. Yeah. You know, aim for the target. As always. Missed it. Yeah feeling like I let God down. Yeah. Feeling like I destroyed my witness. Yeah. Or messed up in a way that was uh, irredeemable. Yeah. To see the grace of God. Yeah. The mercy of God. To shield me from myself in some of those times. Yeah. When, I'm like, man, I... I <laughs> And that, that ain't even tongues. That's just right, right. Man, yeah. I, I, God, that, I, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah. To see him still. Yeah. Show up. Yeah. Move. Grace. Yeah. Mercy. A way out of no way. Man. Sometimes God has blessed me quiet. <sighs> and meaning. Oh, talk to yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. Like yeah. he's blessed. He's blessed in such a way where I couldn't say nothing. Yeah. Words cannot even express. I don't got no words for that. <laughs> right. Right. 
Because I know what I deserve. Correct. Jesus didn't deserve this. No. As an act of love, mm. he willingly laid down his life. Laid down his life. Yeah. I don't think I could do that. <sighs> You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's the question. Could you do that? Mm. Let me let me let me add this. Yeah. Um, I often, for those who have seen me in these conversations, I love talking about my wife. Yeah. I love talking about our marriage. Um, it wasn't until the day that I said, I do, um, that that very question uh -huh. really rocked me to my core. Wow. Um, would I be willing? To literally lay down my life for this young lady, mm. and, it, and it and it's all centered around the question of love that we mm -hmm. you know things mm -hmm. that we unpack. Um, but I think it's a valid question that everyone should should really consider. Yeah, are you willing? Really, like, are you really willing to lay lay down your life for someone? Yeah. The, the the true essence and the true embodiment of love, mm -hmm. sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. And as we read these passages, um, I pray and I hope and I desire that um, it causes you um, to really identify the choices that you're making. Yeah. It causes you to identify how much time you're spending with him. Mm -hmm. It causes you to really think about um, how much an, how much of an impact are you having on the lives that you come in contact with, mm -hmm. because you may be the only Jesus that they see. Your life may be the only Bible that they can read, and in the time that God has given you to be a demonstration of his love how many lives will be drawn how many people will say okay i want to give this jesus thing a, a try mm. just like that teacher that said ah, that's not my thing yeah but it's something about your walk your life i, I want to I, I want to incline my ear <laughs> to listen in for more yeah yeah. I want to pray about that, man. Because yeah. that, that's 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 our mandate. That is. Christ died for us so that we could live for him. Yep. Let's pray about that. Okay. Lord, thank you for the ultimate example and demonstration of sacrifice in the life, death, burial, resurrection, and glorious ascension of Jesus the Christ. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters who are watching now, asking, oh God, that you would give them the courage to lay down their lives, yeah. to entrust themselves fully to the master's care, knowing, oh God, that you will empower them to do what it is that you desire them to do. Yeah. I pray, oh God, for their continual willingness to surrender their agendas their desires, their hopes, their dreams, their plans to you to do with whatever you desire. Yeah. I pray for renewed hearts, oh God, for those who have walked with you for some time and perhaps their, their hearts have grown comfortable or maybe even callous or cold towards this resurrection message. May we never forget the hope to which we have been called. I pray, oh God, that we would take up the mantle to live lives that show people who you are. Your word says that you have placed your treasure in earthen vessels. Mm -hmm. We're cracked. We're bruised. We're broken in certain places, Lord God, but those flaws are what you shine through. I pray that your strength will be made perfect in our weakness as we seek to live lives for you. We sacrificially give ourselves to you as an act of worship. 
Have your way with us and through us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Family? Brother. Let's worship. Let's worship. Because there's nobody greater than you. There's nobody greater than you, God. And so we exalt you. We lift up your name, Lord God. We know that you're going to draw people into your presence. And so we lift you up and we exalt the name above all names. Let's call his name. Everybody say, Jesus, your name is greater. Your name is greater, greater than all. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, your name is greater. Your name is greater, greater than all. Let's go. the top everybody say Jesus your name is greater your name is greater greater than all we declare it oh Jesus your name is greater your name is greater greater than all and there's nothing you can't do there is nothing you cannot do there is Your name is greater, your name is greater, greater than all. We lift our hands and say, Jesus, your name is greater, your name is greater, greater than all. And there's nothing, there is nothing you cannot do, no, no. There is nothing impossible. Our God, our God is greater. 